about a change in colors? Primary. Primary colors? <laughs> well, let's see. <laughs> <laughs> what to say about change in primary colors? Somebody left a pen up here, so... Blue pen. Okay. Uh, thank you very much for, uh, for uh, having me out here. And uh, it's a real pleasure. As, as I was saying to the group on um, the workshop group on Monday, it's it's a it's a real pleasure and honor to to do something I I so enjoy, and and, and to have people come and watch me do this. Uh, this can make you, uh, as an artist, when you have a group like this come up to show, show up, it can make kind of go to your head, and you feel pretty excited. But I'll tell you, when you get home, you still have to do the dishes, you still have to change the diapers, you still have to do all those things, and so. Um, that's the way it is. Okay, I have a, oh, I was asked if I could just move this over to the right slightly, and I looked around the room, and I think I can do that uh, without you folks over there losing too much. How are we doing? You still see over there? How are the folks on this side doing? Sometimes to act more of the uh, abstract, impressionistic way of doing things. Uh, this one right here, so you can understand what was going on there, that was done the last 20 minutes of class today. And uh, uh, my attempt there was to show how you can block in large masses and still get the idea across. You don't have to have, to have a whole lot of detail. The, cl the classes that I teach are, are oh, I, I tend to just see the big shapes and big patterns. By the way, uh, feel free to uh, <coughs> ask any questions at any time. Uh, I, feel, I feel comfortable talking while I'm painting. And if I'm in a spot where I can't, I can't talk, I'm in a tight spot that we tend to get into sometimes, I'll just say hold on to that question. Uh, I like to do, I like to do value studies before I paint. It helps me to organize my thinking. And, and the easy thing to do would be, would be for me to, uh, by, by the way, this is a marine scene. You can't see it in the back of the room. It's a, it's a close up of the, some of these old wooden boats that we have in the area where I live. Uh, but what I see when I go out and paint, when I go out and get an idea, is I see, I see a collection of abstract shapes and patterns. And I don't care if it's a marine scene or if it's a floral or street scene, whatever. If, if I see an interesting pattern, uh, then I try to capture that on paper. But uh, uh, these are. Uh, <coughs> Let's see what, let's just see what we can do tonight with this. Uh, but I do like to show you this value pattern. I, and, I, and I take the time to show you this because I want, to, I want you to see that this is not a laborious process that I take a whole lot of time to do, but it still helps me to organize my thinking. I would say that my, uh, the, the changes that I've had in my career uh, have gone through a, oh, the light source comes from one direction, so let's, let's try to capture that, it'll show form, to where I'm at the point now where I'm slowly changing into more and more what light source and who cares about the light source, let's just, uh, <laughs> let's just, let's find an interesting pattern and uh, One question that came up uh, during the week is, do I paint this, what subject matter sells well? And uh, what, you know, do I paint for that subject matter that sells well? And I decided early on that, that I would not play that game, even though uh, uh, you know, I was still uh, sticking my neck out to make a living at it right off the bat. 
um, but I, I just I want I went into the art because I wanted the freedom to create, and I didn't want to get into that where people own, owned me again. I guess is the way of looking at it. So, so uh, I decided early on that 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 if it's a good painting, it should be able to find a home. And I found that, regardless of what the subject matter is, I found that to be quite true. Good design will find a, find a home eventually. And uh, as I was sharing with my class this week, that there's only been one exception to that, and it did take me a little while, but all these paintings did find homes eventually. And that was my Dead Bird series. <laughs> and yes, they were all roadkill. So that's. Someone asked in class, well, why do you do dead birds? And I said, well, they don't move. <laughs> so, but they are all sold. I see some lights coming in through here. This one has it has a light pattern that's that's fairly self-explanatory. I didn't I didn't need to to uh, come in with my my light source from a different direction or come up with something else. Um, I think that this the light hits up here on top of this. It comes down. It's the side here. I was, I was uh, just about ready to say, well, maybe we ought to have the light coming from that direction, but let's, uh, let's do this. How much of your work is done from photographs in, in, in comparison to mind's eye? Well, I have, I have uh, mind's eye meaning absolutely no photo reference at all. Yeah, just your imagination. I, I usually always have some sort of a reference. Some, everything I paint is something that I have seen or experienced, and I... Uh, I generally have a, a reference, a photo reference, or a sketch of some, something. But as you can see, I really, I really go f launch off into different directions uh, with, uh, with those ideas. Oh, is that a charcoal pencil that you're working with? No, this is a 6B pencil. It's a broad lead, one of the big flat ones. Very common. And I like it because you can fill in these, these spaces very, uh, very quickly. Now, when I uh, when I saw uh, uh, my my instructor at school was Irving Shapiro at the American Academy of Art. How many here have heard of Irving Shapiro? He had quite an influence and uh, was a wonderful, really wonderful teacher at the school, uh, a dominating figure at the at the academy. Uh, and uh, we 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 developed a good relationship over the years. Now, where was I going with that? Why did I mention that? Oh, he would, uh, he would do these value studies before he did his painting, and they were just beautiful. And I realized in art school the importance of these value studies and how they organized his thinking. And so I made a, a, a point of, uh, of cleaning up my value studies and cleaning up my thinking, and it really uh, it paid big dividends for my... Uh, from my career. Okay, we'll go with that. So do you sell belly studies? Pretty little mess in the studio. Do you see the market on location painting or mainly? I do a little bit on location painting, but uh, uh, I really like to get away from my subject matter and just maybe have a reference or a, a, some, a few notes or a sketch or something because I can, I, I can then, it, the eye is too greedy and uh, it's, it's always, you're, you're, when you're on location, you're always fighting this, this uh, what to put in, what to leave out and, and there's so much information. I like to step away from it and then use my own creative uh, uh, feelings and thoughts. Uh, all I need is a few basic big shapes and I can then carry the painting from there. For example, if I'm out on location, I think it would be fairly difficult for me to 
to make this mass back here, this tree mass, which we would consider normally a green mass, it would, it would be difficult for me on location, I think, to make that a cadmium red mass back there. But if I'm in the studio, I can get away from it, I go, okay, now let's see what I can do with what's given to me. And I, have, I think I have a little more freedom that way. Um, but occasionally I do go on location. I get, I get studio fever, I get tired of it, I will go out. Also, you got to remember, I, I live in the Northwest where it rains almost every <laughs> day. And I would be a frustrated on location painter if I, that were my desires. Fall, summer, and here comes the American Watercolor Society show. And I don't worry, I don't really paint for those shows for the most part. I just I paint for a living, and then what's left over, I, <laughs> probably not the way to do it, but uh, <laughs> see what I've got to do the show. So I had that, and I thought, you know, wouldn't that be funny if this one got into the American Watercolor Society show? I don't think there'd be any other painting in that whole show that was done on a steering wheel of a 1972 Volvo, and, uh, and it was a pleasant surprise because it did get into the show, my first one into that show, and it also was selected for the traveling exhibition and also got a medal, so you never know. <laughs> what brand of paints are you using? Uh, Grumbacher Finest, Dan Smith, uh, Windsor Newton. Holbein's good, any, any professional brand. Let's squeeze out some fresh paint because we want, we want some exciting color here. <laughs> Lots of fresh color. Can you tell us what colors your are in your palette? Yeah. Uh, oh, these are the earth colors, burnt umber, raw umber, raw sienna, burnt sienna. Well, that's not burnt sienna there. I had something else in there. But I have not used the, uh, this goes back to what I was being introduced. I have not used the uh, earth colors for quite some time. Uh, I find that the more colors you have in your palette, the more there's the tendency to, to uh, gray down your paintings. You think that more colors mean more, more intense paintings, but I've actually found maybe the opposite, because you have so, so many more colors that you're mixing that uh, uh, they tend to gray down a little bit. So I dropped some of the earth colors, and the uh, intensity of my paintings went up a little bit, up a notch. So then you get into your uh, standard palette. Cad red light. Oh, there's, that was another red I, was, I had an extra tube of. Lizard crimson, but I, had, I just grabbed this... Uh, Permanent rose. Uh, let me give you my standard palette. These, these are a couple of colors that have to come in. Cad red light, lizard crimson, cobalt violet, ultramarine blue, cobalt blue, cerulean blue, olive green, cad yellow light, phthalo green, and phthalo blue. Let's see, what do I want? Cerulean. <coughs> I like to squeeze, I know it's kind of a, a last minute thing to see me do this, but I like to squeeze out my paint just right before I paint, because then it's nice and moist and I can get lots of it on my brush. Uh, you'll find that I tend to get several colors at once on my brush. Okay. No, they seem to do pretty good about that. <laughs> but I do have to remember to. When I'm late after late on Friday afternoons and I'm a little bit tired, that's a hard thing to remember. Okay, let's uh, let's do this. Let's squirt the back. I like to squirt the back and the front. This uh, 
this is the way I did all these. Some of them are done on dry paper, but uh, I, I like the I like this technique because it tends to make them make the, the, the paints flow, and uh, you get a little softer edges right off the bat. This is a 140 pound arches cold press. No, arches rough. Uh, I don't use 300 pound anymore. Because, mm -hmm. because. It's, I just find it's not necessary for me anymore. The only reason I used it before was because it was um, it was uh, it didn't it didn't buckle. But but I can do it. I work fast enough now. And I work all over that that the 140 pound doesn't buckle much for me. <coughs> uh, the quality is just the same. They're both good, good paper. <laughs> 13 years in diapers. Not me, I mean, <laughs> my, my kids. And uh, I remember that last diaper, I wanted to bronze it. <laughs> we are going to immortalize it with watercolor paint. Mac, if you feel more comfortable coming up here, I got that. You, those of you back there in that corner, I had that sun right in your eyes. Feel free to come up here. That's uncomfortable. Okay. Let's jump in. This is an ox hair, inch and a half flat. Uh, this one's got. Tony Van Hassel's name on it. I guess I should have returned it to him. study very carefully. I uh, have to tell you, I admire these guys that uh, that do the same painting over and over before crowds because uh, I think that's a safe way to go and it's but I tend to do things I haven't done, and it gets me in trouble, and then, I have, then I'm having to find my way out. And, uh, but I guess I like that kind of tension. Keeps me awake, I guess. <laughs> I would say so, but I tend to uh, watch much more carefully the uh, the value structure. The uh, the value structure, yes. Um, I would say usually I I think yeah I'll go towards the warmer towards the cool side. And I'm I'm thinking that on this one will probably go towards the warm side, but uh, I've been no known to change <laughs> fast. I, I keep all the options open. I don't lock myself into anything and see how the painting's developing here. But I do, yes, I do start with an idea. Uh, talk about the five dip method here. <laughs> well, I like to get I like to get about three, four, five colors on this brush at once. You can see, like right there, it creates a nice band of broken color. So 
did you always paint like that, or is this just something that evolved? Oh, no, you can see some of the earlier ones down there. Uh -huh. yeah, just, you get, you just, you do a, you do a couple, you do it a certain way for a while, and you, you change, and you, got, you try something else. Um, I think you. I think over a period of time, you just end up simplifying, simplifying. First, you spend so much time and energy just trying to get the thing to look like something, and then, uh, and then after you're able to do that for a while, then, uh, then you start to learn to simplify. Say more with less. Gonna, our uh, our light pattern is going to be fairly narrow here. I mean, it's very small, but I still it'll give me a chance to throw a lot of color into my mid tones, and darks. If you watch closely here, you'll see me dipping into several colors at once. Do you value sketch at all while you're doing this? Mm -hmm. Yes, I'm looking at it very carefully. <laughs> <laughs> There's a band of broken color. Yeah. back for fresh color. <coughs> Must be warm in here because it's, it's drying real fast. It's the lights. Oops, now that was, I wasn't expecting that color there, but I don't, don't worry about that too much. We just change it right on the, right on the paper. Do you paint every day? Uh, I don't paint every day, but my my profession of being an artist is an everyday thing. Mm -hmm. okay. There's always always something else that, we, that needs to be done if I don't feel like painting. But no, I don't I don't do it every day. Uh, mention how you have your palette situated there with the tilt. Well, I, I, um, I have it tilted so that the water will run down towards the bottom. You know, keep this clean right here. See, that's still damp up there, so I can throw on those washes.
Okay. Let's uh let's uh any qu any other questions? What's the average price of your painting? <laughs> <laughs> What do you sell your demos for? Oh, they range from fifteen hundred to to uh, to uh, two seventy five. They range from fifteen hundred to to. Uh, Two seventy five. Right What's well, been kind of nice these last these last few years, last eight years or so, is that uh, is that I it took me so long to do a good painting. Even you know, after three years of art school, and that was a real struggle. I'd be just, it just took me a long time to, to visualize it, and uh, 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 now it's, it's been nice that I can, I can see this quickly. We've got enough experience that these things come a little bit quicker now. <coughs> um, just more pleasure in the painting process. So you've gone to a small brush now? Yes, because I'm, I'm a. Uh, Trying to put in a little bit of detail. These are squirrel mop brushes, but uh, I'm going to be going back to a back to a uh, larger one here pretty soon. Eric, I noticed you have like a website. Can you tell us a little bit about if that home having a website has helped your career in painting at all, or do you get many? people that inquire about your paintings through the internet, or is it word of mouth? Uh, it has helped us. Uh, I, I don't think, it's like a lot of these things when they first come out, people say, oh, it's the answer. No, I don't, it's not the answer, and nothing beats, uh, nothing beats the personal contact that I have with people coming into my gallery, and nothing beats somebody having a good friend that has a paint, one of my paintings on their wall and coming in and seeing me. Uh, but the internet has helped us. I don't know if we picked up uh, new people so much. Uh, some of never been in my gallery, but people who come in my gallery move away cross country, and it's a way for them to keep in touch with my work. And uh, we sold it. We sold enough, several paintings off of that this last year. Uh, but it's but it's it probably uh, it may have also helped me more with. Uh, let's bring out this boat just a little bit. With. Uh, you know, person interesting in my, interested in my workshops, uh, rather than having to send out flyers, they can go right onto the internet and get all the information. So that's that's been nice. Have you seen the Northwest Watercolor <coughs> Show? Um, are you active in that organization? Yes. Yes. I have a painting in it currently. Why do you ask? I just got the catalog. I thought it was a really nice show. It seems like a nice, a nice society. It is. <laughs> so I am very experimental with my color. Uh, I do not follow, try to follow any, any particular pattern. I just. Uh, tend to rely quite a bit on my just my own instincts and and as I was mentioning to the class yesterday that uh, I think the most valuable thing I ever learned in color was what 